All right, let's go ahead and bootstrap our application. So navigate to start.spring.io and right here you can bootstrap your application with Maven or Gradle. So let's go ahead and pick Maven. And then for the language, go ahead and pick Java. For the Spring Boot version, you can pick anything above, um, or oh, actually um, two, right? So Spring Boot 2, version two. So if you don't see 2.19, you can pick anything that is two point and then whatever. Then for the project metadata, so right here, go ahead and simply say uh, your company. So let me go ahead and simply say Amigos code or your domain. And then for the artifact, I'm going to say image. Oh, actually, um, AWS image and then upload something like that, right? And then you can go ahead and, you know, specify more options such as the Java version. So I'm going to pick Java 11 and then I'm going to leave everything as is. And for the dependencies to add, go ahead and simply, so if I actually switch to this um, list right here, you can see the full list of dependencies. So the one that I'm interested in is the Spring Web. So I'm going to pick that one. And then what I'm going to do is simply generate project. And then I'm going to save this to my desktop. And there we go. All right, now that we have this zip folder, let's go ahead and open up with IntelliJ. So let me collapse this, and then I'm going to extract this zip folder. So let me extract it. There we go. And let me delete this zip folder. So I'm going to be using IntelliJ for this tutorial. And if you want to learn about IntelliJ, I've got a full course on YouTube teaching everything you need to know about IntelliJ. So what I'm going to do is simply click open and then let me navigate to desktop and then open up the folder that you've just downloaded and then go ahead and open up the palm.xml and then as project and there we go. So now Maven it's doing its thing and we should have a project already bootstrapped. So just give a second for indexing. And there you go. Now let's go ahead and open up Google. And let's go ahead and search for AWS and then Java SDK. So right here, so actually simply say Maven actually. So right here, let's go ahead and click on the very first link. So this is the library that we actually need. And you can see that it's the Amazon SDK for Java that provides an API for building software on AWS. And you can see right here, Amazon S3, EC2, SQS, so on and so forth. So let me actually grab that. And then what I'm gonna do is expand this main folder. So AWS image upload. And inside of this folder, we have palm.xml. So this is where you define all the dependencies for your project. So inside of this dependencies section right here, after the test, so this one right here, so Spring Boot start the test, let's go ahead and simply paste our dependency. So that one, and then simply say enable auto import. And this will go ahead and resolve the dependency for you. Just, just give you a second. And there we go. So everything has been resolved. Now we have this dependency that we can use to interact with Amazon AWS. Next, let me go ahead and show you the credentials that you need from the Amazon console so that your server can connect to Amazon. All right, so let me go ahead and open up Chrome. And what I'm gonna do is simply navigate to AWS. And then if you don't have an account, go ahead and register. It doesn't cost you anything. They give you, um, I think it's 250 hours for free for a year so that you can experiment with some of these resources 
or services that Amazon does provide. And to be honest, Amazon is the leading cloud provider out there. Everyone is using it and you should be uh, aware of it and also know how to use it and understand how some of the services do work. And today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to use Amazon S3. So let me go ahead and simply sign into the console. So if you don't have an account, go ahead and create. Once you have the account, go ahead and sign into the console. So right here, I can you can see that I'm inside of the Amazon console. So right here, you have a bunch of uh, services that they provide. But the one that we are interested in is the Amazon S3. So before we move any further, what we need to do is to grab the Amazon credentials. So go ahead and click on your account and then go to my security credentials. And right here, you can see that you can generate access keys. So I think I'm only able to create two access keys, but go ahead and pretty much generate one and then you'll be given the um, so if I go ahead and generate one, so you can see that the limit has exceeded, but go ahead and generate one and you'll be given two things, the access key as well as the secret. So as you can see, once you've downloaded the secret, you're not able to uh, see it, right? So if I click on it, you can see that um, I can't see it. And in fact, let me go ahead and simply generate one. So the oldest one right here is this one. So I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to type delete right here. And then if I go ahead and generate access key, you can see that you get the access key ID as well as the secret. So you can see right here. So go ahead and download the file and then I'm going to show you how to use it. So let me actually download the file and then put it inside of my desktop. There we go. And that is done. So now that we have the access key as well as the secret, Let's go ahead and write some Java code that will take those and gives us an instance of the Amazon S3 client so that we can interact with buckets. All right, let's open up IntelliJ. And inside of IntelliJ, let me actually close this POM XML because we don't need it and go ahead and inside of src so source main and then java and you can see right here that we have this class so if i open it up this is the main class that starts the spring boot application so what we're going to do right here is simply create a package so inside of the main folder let's go ahead and create a package and right here simply call it config and by the way, if you want to learn about IntelliJ, I've got a full course on YouTube for free about IntelliJ. Next, let me go ahead and simply name this as Amazon and then config and then enter. And there we go. Now I'm going to annotate this class with add and then configuration. There we go. So that spring instantiates this and anything that I have inside here. Next, let's go ahead and simply say public and then Amazon and then S3. So this comes from the dependency that we've added inside of our pom.xml. So enter and then right here, simply say S3. And then inside, what we are going to do is simply say AWS and then credentials and then simply say AWS credentials equals to, and then basic or actually new and then basic AWS credentials. There we go. And you can see that we have to pass D. So if I press command P uh, and you can also see the keyboard shortcuts down below, we have to pass the access key and the secret key. So, let me actually go ahead and put uh, empty strings for now. And if I open up the CSV, so what I'm going to do is use terminal and I'm going to say cat and then desktop and then forward slash access keys dot CSV, or you can open this file using the ID. So basically I want to get the contents. So enter 
you can see that the access key is this one. So I'm going to go back to IntelliJ and then put it in. And then for the secret, let me grab this and then paste it. And there we go. So now we have the credentials. Now what we need to do is simply say return. So we're going to return and then Amazon S3 and then client builder and then dot standard. So this is using the builder pattern. So let me put this on a new line and then that on a new line as well. And then dot with and then credentials. And we want to pass the credentials. So new AWS and then static and then credentials provider and inside pass the credentials just like that. And then simply say dot and then build. There we go. Now we have this class that will give us the S3 client right here so we can use it. Now, obviously, this is missing an annotation and that is at and then bean. So that Spring instantiates this class right here. So an instance of Amazon S3 with these configurations so that we can inject in other classes. Next, let's go ahead and create the bucket that we will be storing and retrieving images from. All right, go back to the Amazon console and go back to S3. So click on services, S3. So you can search for S3 or you can see in the history or you can pin, so you can pin S3 right here. So whatever is easy for you. So I'm gonna click on S3 and then you can see that I already have a couple of buckets right here, right? So I've got one for my website and another one for Elastic Beanstalk. So I was doing some experiments and also you can see this one, testing image one, two, three. Now let's go ahead and create a new bucket and the bucket name, let's go ahead and simply say Amigos and then code dash and then image dash up load and then dash one, two, three. So this is the name of the bucket. And then obviously you can specify the actual region. So for me, let me go ahead and simply say Ireland. So Ireland, there we go. And you can copy settings from existing buckets, but I'm going to leave it as is and simply create. And there we go. So now we do have this bucket right here called Amigos Code Image Upload 123. So the bucket names, they must be unique. So if you have a bucket name called Amigos Code Dash Images Dash Upload 123, it won't work. So it has to be a unique bucket, right? So go ahead and pretty much just use your company name or your name or generate a you know, very random uh, bucket name for your own use. So what I'm gonna do is simply grab this uh, name. So this is the name of the bucket. So actually let me click on it and then I can grab the bucket name from here. So I just copy that. And currently you can see that the bucket is empty. So what we're gonna do is go back to IntelliJ and let's go ahead and create a new package. So let's go ahead and simply create a new package. And right here, simply call it buckets. And then inside of this bucket, let's go ahead and create a new class. And this will be an enum. So we're gonna pick enum from this uh, drop down. And then right here, simply say bucket and then name. And then press enter. And what we're gonna do is simply define an enum called profile and then image. So this will be an enum that we can use through our code base that will have the current, the, the following value. So amigos code image upload one, two, three. Now, obviously that uh, needs some work. So let's go ahead and simply say private and then final and then string and then bucket and then name and I'm missing a semicolon there and what we need to do is simply create a constructor for this 
just like that, refactor, and then refactor, and there we go. So now we have this enum that takes a bucket name, and then we can use only this enum to get this specific value. So let's go ahead and generate the actual getter. There we go. And we are done with this class. Next, let's go ahead and pretty much create our service that will store images to this specific bucket. All right, so I just wanna mention that you saw that we created the S3 bucket via the Amazon console. We could have created a bucket within our Java application, right? So usually that's not the best practice uh, when it comes to create like infrastructure, right? Because a bucket is a piece of infrastructure. So you either create it manually or better, you might use something like CloudFormation or Terraform. So just to let you know that, you know, there are other options in the way that you can create buckets, but if you wanna create buckets uh, through code, I would not recommend it. If you have any questions, go ahead and message me. Otherwise, let's move on. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new package. So inside of this package, let's simply go ahead and name it as file and then store. And then enter. And now inside of this package, let's go ahead and create a class called file and then store. Just like that, enter. And now we have this class that will in that will use this um this class right here that we um told Spring Boot to make it available for us to inject and then store images. So basically we can store not only images but you can store anything that you want really, right? A file, zips, um you know pretty much anything that you can think of. So now let me simply go ahead and open up the file store class. Let me go ahead and annotate this with add and then service. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to say private and then final Amazon S3, simply name it as S3 and then add to constructor. And right here, we're going to auto wire. So this is using dependency injection. And again, if you wanna learn more about this, go ahead and check my YouTube channel where I've got plenty of videos on dependency injection as well as Spring Boot. Now let's go ahead and pretty much implement our very first method. So we will implement the save method and then the download method later on. So what we're gonna do here is simply create a method, so public and then void, so we're not going to return anything and simply say save. Now, what we need to specify right here are a couple of things. So one, we need the path. So the path will be the bucket name plus any subfolders that you may or may not have. So let me go ahead and say path and then we're going to have the file name, so string, and then file, and then name. And let's also have an optional, and this will be an optional. So actually, let me put this on a new line so you can see exactly everything. So right here will be an optional of a map. So a map of strings and then string right here. And basically this will serve as the uh, metadata that we can pass to store images or files, right? So you can include the uh, content type, the content length, so on and so forth. So let me simply say optional and then metadata. There we go. And then comma. And then we're going to pass the actual input and then streams. So this is what gets saved to uh, Amazon S3 bucket. So I'm gonna show you exactly how we're going to get this from our client. But for now, let's go ahead and simply say try. 
And then inside of this try block, what we want is to say S3 and then dot. And then you can see that we have a couple of methods. But the one that I really want is the put method. So right here, I'm going to pass the path, the file name, and then the input stream, and then the metadata, right? So meta and then data. So what I'm going to do actually is let's go ahead and create this metadata. So let me go ahead and simply say object metadata and then object metadata equals to and then new object metadata. And now right here, I'm going to say optional dot and then if present. So we'll have the actual map. So inside of this map, I'm going to say if and then map dot is empty. And I'm actually going to flip it. So I'm going to flip it just like this. So if it's not empty, what I'm going to do is simply say map dot and then for each I'm going to say object metadata column column and then add user metadata taking the key as well as the value. So if you want to find out exactly how uh, this is being used, so it's like that, right? So you can see that for each takes the key and the value and then I'm saying add uh, or actually object metadata add metadata. So inside of this uh, object right here, there is a method called add user metadata, passing the key and value from this map right here, right, which is this one, if is present, but we can use method reference. So just like that, and it looks much neater. And there we go. And in fact, this, uh, actually, let me rename this to metadata. So just like that. And then just like that. And you can see that this error now went away. Now, if we are successful, so if we are successful with this operation right here, which might throw an exception, we simply store the file. Otherwise, we're going to catch, let's go ahead and catch D, Amazon, and then service exception right here, and then simply say E. And then for now, I'm simply going to throw new and then illegal state exception. And then I'm going to say uh, failed to store content to store file to S3 and then comma and then pass the actual exception, right? And there we go. So now we have this method that saves files to Amazon S3. Now, let's go ahead and actually build this application incrementally, i.e. let's go ahead now and define uh, the actual model and then the actual API. And then let's build the front end and upload a image and see that it works. And then we can improve the application progressively. All right, let's go ahead and define the actual model for this application. So if I go back to the actual um, diagram, so right here. So basically, we want to upload uh, images for let's say profile users, right? So a profile user coming from uh, our react front end can upload uh, an image, right? So we can upload an image for a profile user. So let's go ahead and define the profile user class or model. So inside of uh, the main package, so let's go ahead and create yet another package. And let's call this package as profile. And let's create now a new class. And we're going to name this class as profile and then user or user profile, I think um, uh, it sounds better. So user and then profile. Now this user will have a few things. So one, we will have an ID for this profile user. So private and then UID. And then this will be, uh, let's actually say profile or actually user and then profile ID. 
And then let's go ahead and simply have a, a username. So private and then string and then user name. And finally, because we need to store the actual image, let's go ahead and simply say string and then profile and then image and then key. So this will be uh, the actual, well, actually not key, but let's simply say uh, profile or user profile and then image and then link. And let me simply add a comment saying that this will be the S3 and then link or actually key, right? So now let's go ahead and generate a constructor just like that. And let me put this on a new line so you can see everything. Let's also generate some um, getters and setters or oh, actually just like that. Oops. So getters and setters just like that. And finally, we will need the equals and hash code. So let's go ahead and say equals and hash code. And right here, go ahead and pretty much just select the default there. And then simply say next, next, and then select all non members, just like that, and then finish. So right here, I'm going to change something. Right. So right here, instead of saying um, user profile ID dot equals, because this might be null and if it's null, it will blow. So what I want to do here is instead of say equals, I'm going to say objects, objects dot and then equals. So right here. So I'm going to show you exactly what this means in a second. And I don't want this. So uh, no and then don't ask again. So let me actually remove that. And then this will be a comma there. And let me grab this and then paste it there, there. And then right here, simply add the uh, opening of parentheses and then remove that equals there. Well, actually that parentheses and then the same here. So use a profile just like that. Remove the equals and the parentheses and then comma. So basically, so if I save this and then indent things, so if I open up this object or equals, you can see that it's saying whether a equals to B, right? Or a not equals to null and a dot equals B. So basically right here, we have our null check, which will make things much better. So I think you can use Guava and Guava and you know, does all of this, but because we've used the defaults uh, when generated the actual uh, equals from Java seven, this is what we get. So there we go. Now that we have our model called user profile, let's go ahead and create a fake database where we're going to return some fake users to our clients. All right, so let's go ahead and pretty much just have a uh, another package and right here simply say data and then store. And let's go ahead and simply create a new class and simply say fake and then user profile data and then store and then press enter. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and simply annotate this with at and then repository. And let's go ahead and simply have a private and then static final and then list. So this will return a list of user and then profile. And let me simply say user profiles equals to and then new and then array list just like that. And then inside of a static block, let's simply add some user profiles. So user profiles dot and then add new and then user profile. And then right here, let's simply go ahead and simply say UID dot random UID. And then, and then for the username, let's simply say Janet and then Jones. 
and then what we need so command p and then we need the actual link so the link i'm going to say no right there and let's add another one and in fact let me put this full screen so you can see so i'm going to duplicate this and then right here let's simply say um antonio and then junior just like that and then also for now let's keep the user profile image link null and there we go so one change that i want to make so because this user profile image link can be null let's go ahead and open up the profile uh or actually user profile model and right here so when we return the um so right here so where we get the user profile link let's make this an optional and then what we're going to do is simply return optional dot of nullable just like that so anyone looking at this method or calling this method knows that this might be null and then they can use optionals and streams to a code against it which is really cool so there we go now that we have this data store let's go ahead and pretty much have a method so let's go ahead and simply say public and then a list and then user and then profiles and then get and then user profiles there we go and now let's simply return and then user and then profiles there we go and we are good to go so now that we have this fake user profile let's go ahead and create the api that will return this list right here so if i go to the diagram again so we're going to build this part right here so currently we've been touching uh, a lot on the service on the service side right here but let's go ahead and define this API for now. So, but next, let's go ahead and create a method that the client can hit and then they get the and then they get the list of user profiles in our database. And if I expand this, so inside of this package right here, so profile let's go ahead and create a class and simply name it as profile and then controller or actually user profile and then controller and then enter and there we go so now let's go ahead and simply annotate this with at and then rest and then controller and then controller and then let's go ahead and also define the at and then request and then mapping and right here let's simply go ahead and say api and then v1 and then user dash profile and then inside let's go ahead and define a method so let's go ahead and say that we want to have a method that will return a list of users so public and then list and this will be user profile and simply say get and then user and then profiles there we go and for now let's simply return and then no for now so now let's go ahead and simply say this will be at and then get mapping and that's it now let's go ahead and define a service class so user profile and then service and let's also define the class that interacts with the database so let's go ahead and simply say user profile data access and then service so the job of this class will be also at and then repository so this will be a repository now inside right here let's use some dependency injection so i'm going to say private and then final fake and then user profile data store and let's add this to constructor and then auto wire there we go and if i remove that line 
Now, let me go ahead and simply say this will return a list and then of user and then profile. There we go. And then let me simply say get and then user profiles. And guess what? We're going to return the fake or actually fake user profile data store dot and then get user profiles. So the reason why I'm doing this is because you can use then uh, dependency injection to change this class right here, right? So if you implement to an interface and I explain this on my videos a lot, how to implement to an interface and then how you can switch implementation. So that's why I'm actually um, you know, injecting this class right here so that then you can use, um, you know, dependency injection to change implementations. Right now we are using a fake data store or a fake database. But if you want to use, for example, MySQL or Postgres, you can pretty much change just one line. Of, you can pretty much just change one line of code and then you switch to a real database. So if you want to learn more about that, go ahead and check my videos where I teach all of that. So now, so now that we have this user profile data access service, let's go ahead and you open up the user profile service. So this is where all the business logic really happens. So for us, we simply have um, one method and really there's no business logic at the moment. So user uh, and then profile data access service. And again, let me inject this. So at and then uh, auto wired and this will be at and then service. So right here again, let me simply say this will be a, a list or in fact, let me grab the exact same thing here and then paste it here and then this will be user profile data access service and there we go so now it means that i can take this user profile service go back to user profile controller and then simply say private and then actually this uh, should be final and then right here let me simply inject and then at and then auto wire. So now you can see how things are connected. So get and then use the profiles. Now let's go ahead and pretty much just fire up the application and see if we get an API up and running. So let me go ahead and open up the AWS image upload application. And in fact, I'm going to rename this to main, uh, of course. I want to rename that and then open up main and then simply run this main class. And there we go. So if I show you the logs, you can see that right here, Tomcat initialized with ports 8080. Now, if I collapse this and open up user profile controller, now take this path right here and then go ahead and simply open up your web browser. Simply say localhost and then 8080 forward slash and then paste API v1 user profile, enter and voila, you can see that we have two users in our database. So this is coming from our fake database, but you get the idea. So if you were to implement to a real database, it would be the exact same thing. So you can see that we have Janet Jones here and Antonio Jr. So this is all for this part. Next, let's go ahead and implement the, the upload endpoint. So this one right here. So when the client sends us a file for a particular user, we then want to update. So we want to update this link right here with the correct image profile link. All right, let's go ahead and implement the image upload endpoint. So let me collapse this 
and inside of the user profile controller let's go ahead and define a new method right here so let's go ahead and simply say public and then this will be void and right here what we're going to do and then let's name this as upload and then user pro file and then image and let me add some curly brackets there and what we're going to take from the client are two things one we want to take the path variable so at and then path variable and this will be the actual user pro file and then id and this will be a uid and then let me actually name this as user profile and then id just like that and let me expand this so now we have the actual user profile id coming from the actual path so this will allow us to assign an image to this profile id or to this user and the final thing that we need is the actual file so for this go ahead and simply say at and then request and then param so this will come as request param and let's simply uh, name this as file and you'll see how we're going to set this from the front end and simply say multi and then part and then file just like that and then simply say file now let me go ahead and simply indent things properly and there we go now what we need to do here is very simple let's simply call our user profile service and then let's simply say dot and then upload or in fact let's take the exact same name and then simply pass the user profile id and then the file just like that and then let me go ahead and create this method and just leave it as it is and there we go so let me go back to this controller because we haven't finished so the next thing that i need is to say that this will be at and then post mapping and then inside of this post mapping i need to say that i'm going to consume so consumes and then this is equal to media type multi-part form data and then value and then i'm going to say that i'm going to produce and then media type dot application and then json value and then right here let's simply finally define the actual path so oh in fact let's define the path up above right here and remove this comma so path well actually path not params so path equals to and then this will be so um this will be this user profile id and then add this comma right here and then let's simply say forward slash and then image and then forward slash and then download so there we go so this will be then uh, as follows so the path for this will be uh, we're going to take this uh, id right here and then simply say forward slash the actual id and then forward slash image forward slash and then upload but you're going to see how we're going to define this in a second when we implement the react application and there we go so now this api will be able to take the profile id as well as the file and then use this user profile service to upload images so currently this is empty but we're going to implement it next all right so right now i'm not going to implement the entire logic inside of this method called upload user profile image but i'm going to leave a, um, some comments on what we need to do when we get to this point so one we have to check so uh, one check if image is uh, not empty and then second we want to check if 
oh actually I've got a typo so empty then I want to check if file is an image I then want to check whether so I'm just thinking out loud right here so I then want to check whether the user exists in our database and then if so grab some meta data from and then file if any and it should be with B and then finally what we need to do is simply so five so this will be uh, store the image in S3 and let's simply say and update database with S3 and then image and then link right so we want to update so data base so basically we want to update so let me show you so we want to so we want to update this user profile image link and in fact let me simply uh, say update database um, and then just like that right so we want to update this so for now what I want to do really is nothing I'm not going to implement anything because I want to show you exactly how we are going to get to this point right here where we have the file so now let's switch to front-end where I'm going to show you how to set up the react application and then how we're going to send a file from the front-end and then I'm going to show you how to add a breakpoint so you can see exactly the file at this point. So once we have the file, so once we have the file, we can implement all of this logic. So for now, let's switch to JavaScript and React. All right, let's go ahead and bootstrap the React front end for our application. So let me quickly go to the diagram. And basically, let's go ahead and implement this part right here, right? So where the client will be written in React, and then we will issue get and post request to our API. So go ahead and open up Google and search for create React app. And right here in this very first link, so by Facebook, create React app. So this allows you to bootstrap your React application. So if I scroll down, you can see that you simply have to say npx create React app and then give it a name. And then you say cd into that. So you change directory and then simply npm start and then you will get this app right here so I think they have a screenshot no they don't but I'm gonna show you exactly how this works so go ahead and make sure that you have node installed so if I open up Chrome and then simply say node and make sure that you have node installed in order to have NPM as well as NPX so what I'm gonna do is go back to IntelliJ and right here you can use the terminal right within IntelliJ so let me click on it and if you don't and if you want you can also use your own terminal so right here so just use whatever you want but I'm showing you other options to uh, use terminal so IntelliJ is really powerful so right here so what I'm gonna do is if I do an LS and then dash AL you can see that this is the current folder structure and in fact, if I expand the project tab, so right here, so whatever you see here, you can see that is the exact same thing. So right here, you can see that we have source. So source is right here. We have the pom.xml, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is simply say CD. So change directory into SRC. And then within that, we also have main. So I'm going to press enter. And there we go. Now within main, so this is where I'm going to run this command. So if I go back to uh, uh, Facebook create React app, so right here, I'm going to issue this command right here. So let me copy that and then go back to IntelliJ, paste that in. And then right here, I'm going to change this to front and then end just like that. And then press enter. 
and you can see that this is now going off and you know downloading uh, everything and bootstrapping a react app that we can run within seconds so just give you a second it's downloading all the node dependencies and there we go so you can see now we have this message saying happy hacking and we have a bunch of commands right here so we have uh, how to start so we need to cd into front end and then simply type uh, npm start and you can see right here we have npm run build tests and then eject and also you can see that we have our front end right here so this is awesome so what i'm going to do for now is i'm going to clear the screen and then cd into front end there we go and now i'm going to type npm and then start and there you go so you can see now that we have this react application and basically this is what the bootstrap does so now that we have this bootstrap application let's go ahead and change it to according our needs and also perform a get request to our backend to pull this information right here so we're going to hit this endpoint localhost api version one and then user profile and we should get this array right here you can use intellij ultimate edition for web development but because i'm using the community it doesn't have support for javascript so i'm actually using this one because uh, i know most of you will be using the community edition however if you are using the ultimate you can use uh, ultimate edition for javascript even though i think that this ide vs code is the best ide out there for web development so go ahead and download it to follow along without no issues and i highly recommend it so let me go ahead and open up vs code and what i'm going to do is pretty much just open so i'm going to open inside of the desktop i'm going to open the app and then navigate to source main and then open the front end folder so i'm going to open and there we go so now you can see that i've got the bootstrap application and in fact if i go ahead and pretty much just open up src and then app.js and right here let me simply say um hello and then react and then save this go back to the web browser you see you should see that this reflects immediately so learn react and then hello react let's go ahead and make some changes to this web app according to our needs so what i'm going to do here is pretty much remove everything so actually i'm going to remove everything right here so i, I really don't need everything here so i'm going to remove everything within the header so i'm going to delete that there we go and if i save this go back to the web browser and you can see that now this has nothing so we are good to go so the you know the files here they're very self-explanatory and if you want to learn more about react i've got some videos on react and you know just follow along and it will be super easy so what we need to do here is first let's go ahead and download a dependency called asios so asios allows us to perform http requests to backends so right here so what i'm going to do is go to intellij and what i'm going to do is actually cancel this and for now i'm going to keep away from intellij so i'm going to cancel that and then if i collapse this if i go to my web browser refresh you should see that the site can't be reached so what i'm going to do is within my terminal so i'm going to use my terminal i'm going to cd into desktop inside i've got the aws image upload project and then src main and then front end there we go so now i'm going to say npm 
and then start. And we should get the exact same thing. There we go. So now let me actually cancel and then simply say npm dash and then capital S I for install and then simply install ACOs. Press enter. And there we go. So you can see this was really fast. And if I go ahead and pretty much just say cat and then package.json or oh, actually JSON, you should see that we have the ACOs right here, right? So in fact, just let me show you from within uh, VS Code. So inside of package.json, you can see that we have the ACOs right here. So this is a library that we've just downloaded. Now let's go ahead and start the server. So npm start, or actually, oops, start. And let me go back to VS Code and open up the app.js. And right here, let me go ahead and pretty much um, go ahead and say import and then a and then ACOs from and then ACOs. And from React, what I'm going to import are two things. So I'm going to import the use and then state from React and then use and then effect just like that. So I'm going to be using some hooks and hooks is a new way of creating uh, functional components. And I've been really experimenting with it. I don't know, you know, a great deal about it, but it seems really awesome and it makes your code look much cleaner. So now let me go ahead and right here. So what I'm going to do is simply create a new function. So I'm going to say const and then I'm going to call this as user capital S and then profiles just like that. And this will be an R function. And what we're going to do here is uh, actually I need an equal there. So equal and right here, I'm going to say const and then get or actually fetch and then user and then profiles. And then this will pretty much just invoke uh, ACOs. So I'm going to say uh, ACOs dot and then we have a get function. And within this get we have to pass the uh, URL. So remember correctly, the URL was this one, right? So localhost 8080. Let me copy that and then paste it in. And then what we need is simply dot and then then so this returns a promise and then inside we have the response. So what we're going to do for now, let me simply say console dot log and then res. So I want to log the res. So the response, so you see exactly what is inside and then end that with semicolon. So now after this, what I'm going to do is simply say use and then effect. And then inside of this, I'm going to pass this function right here. And I'm going to simply say get and then users. So actually not get users, but fetch user profiles. So basically this is similar to component did mount if you ever done any kind of react. I'm going to invoke that. And then just like that. Now, what I'm going to do here is also pass an empty uh, array. And this pretty much says if there is anything that uh, changes inside of this list, this use effect will be triggered again. In our case, we haven't got anything just yet, but just add it and it's good to know why it's here. And I've also noticed that I've removed the equal from here. So just let me add it back save that and everything is good to go. Now inside of this div right here, simply go ahead and say user and then profiles. And this is the actual component that we've just created, right? So this is a functional component. Now what I'm going to do is simply save this and then let me go back to Chrome and open up the application. So right here, and you can see that we are missing a statement. So let me actually say that I need to return. So basically, let me simply return um, an, an H1 for now. So hello. 
and then go back and you can see that we have a low right here but now if i inspect the console so i'm interested in the console and then go to console and right here you can see that we have a connection refused and that's because the back end is not up and running so let me simply start the back end there we go up and running let me go back and now refresh and there we go so you can see now we have a different error so access to uh, this url from origin was blocked by cores so this means that when you have um, an application which is trying to communicate to your backend on a different host you get this cores error so this is to prevent from malicious attacks where you know you have different hosts accessing your backend so let's go ahead for now and ignore this so let's go ahead and open up the backend so inside uh, intellij go ahead and open up d so if i click here so go ahead and open up user profile controller and at the very top, so let me put this full screen, go ahead and simply say at, and then cross, and then origin. And then right here, we're going to say that we will accept from anywhere. So you shouldn't really do this. So uh, in production, or if you are deploying this, uh, you should be really know exactly what to allow to your endpoints. But for now, because we are testing things locally, I'm going to enable this to localhost um, 8080. I could even say localhost 80 or actually 3000, but you might have, uh, you know, different um, front end applications locally running in different ports. So by saying star, you simply enable everything. Now, let me go ahead and restart this. So I'm going to say stop and rerun. There we go. Now, if I go ahead to my front end and then refresh, you can see that now we get this status code of 200 and we have the data array. So inside you can see that we have the data and it contains our two users. So there we go. So we've managed to connect to our backend. Next, let's go ahead and pull some of this information right here into our application, and then we will add the capability to upload files. All right, so let's go ahead and take this um, data array right here and shovel into our screen. So currently it says hello, but eventually we want to have all the names right here. So what I'm going to do is go back to VS Code and right here. So where we fetch the users. So right here, you can see that we we go to our back end and then we console.log the response. But remember right here, the response contains the data property. So inside what I'm going to do is simply say const and then user or actually let me simply say data equals to res dot and then data just like that so now that we have the data what we need to do is to set the state so let's go ahead and before this fetch state let's go ahead and simply say const and then right here simply add um you know curly brackets and then user pro files and then simply say set user pro files and this will come from equals to use and then state and the initial state will be an empty array so what we're going to do now here is simply say set and then user profiles and then pass data and in fact let's simply say res dot and then data just like that and delete that so now if i save this you should be setting the state right here now that we have the state we can simply map it into whatever we want so right here where we return the h1 so right here instead of return hello what i'm going to do is simply say user 
profiles. So this user profiles is this one, which is set by this function and then dot and then map. And inside of that, we have the actual uh, user and then uh, actually let me say user profile. And then we also have the index right here. And what I'm going to do is simply add an R function and inside right here for now, let's simply say return and then we're going to return a div and inside of oh actually let me add parentheses because i think it looks cleaner just like that and then just like that and then end there as well and just like that and then inside what i'm going to do is simply add an h1 so right here so right here let me simply add the actual a user profile so user profile dot and then user pro and then file and then id so we get the id or actually let's go ahead and simply say username and then let's have a p tag for the uh, id so user and then profile dot user profile id just like that so now, if I go ahead and pretty much just uh, add the um, actually, so let me add the uh, key right here. So because uh, they have to be unique, this will be the actual index. So if I save this and then go back to Chrome and right here, you can see that we have Janet Jones as well as the actual ID, right? And this should be it. So you can see that now we are rendering the information coming from our backend. So also you can see that. So right here. So if I open up the data. So we have the uh, image profile link, but I'm not going to add that because this will be a real image in a second. Next, let's go ahead and use drop zone, which is a library that allows us to send files to our server. All right, so navigate to react drop zone on GitHub and I'm going to leave a link for this repo so you can follow along. But basically this repo allows us to uh, drop files. So you can see right here it's very slick. So the installation is very straightforward. You simply say npm install dash save react drop zone and then the and and then the usage you can see right here, which simply have this functional component and then we are ready to go. So let's go ahead and install this package. So I'm going to grab that and then open up the terminal. I'm going to cancel out of this, paste that npm install dash dash save react drop zone enter just give you a second and there you go so now we have the library installed so let me simply say npm and then start and voila so you can see that everything is working fine now for each user so for each user profile let's go ahead and add uh, the uh, drop zone where we can upload an image for that specific user. So what we're going to do right here is very straightforward. So let me go ahead and open up VS code and oh, actually let me go back and steal some code. So right here, I'm going to grab this and then go back to VS code and let me paste it here. And we also have to import this. So let me go at the very top, paste that in. And we also have to use the use and then call back. So right here, use call back. And it's that simple. So now what I'm going to do is for each user. So when we loop, what I'm going to do is simply use the drop or actually my drop zone. So in fact, let's go ahead and simply say drop zone. There we go. And then if I save this and now if I open up my browser right here, 
you can see that we have drag and drop some files here. So what I'm going to do for now is you see right here inside of this uh, on drop. So we are using a callback. So what I'm going to so what I'm going to do is so I'm going to say const and then file equals to accepted files. And then I'm going to grab the first file. And right here, I'm going to simply say console dot and then log and then file and then save this. And now what I'm going to do is pretty much just drop a file and see what we get. So right here, let me simply uh, close this. Oh, actually, I need this so you can see exactly the logs. So let me expand it even further, just like that. Now, if I drop this access keys dot CSV, so watch this. So I'm going to take this and then you see that this will change. So you can see that as I put the file there, oh, actually it will happen so quickly. So basically right here, you can see that we are logging right here. So this is the file. So actually let me do it again. So let me clear this and then let me actually grab the file. And you can see that the text changes. So drop the files here. And if I do the same for the other one, you can see that it's changing. So let me actually drop it here. And you can see that we get full information about the file. So if I make this bigger, so you can see right here. So this is a file and we get a bunch of information about it. So the last modified, the name, the path, the size, the type. So it's text CSV. And, you know, this is the actual file that we can now send to our server, which is pretty cool. So now let me go ahead and simply make some changes. So in fact, I'm going to grab this drop zone and put it here. And then what I'm going to do right here is simply add a breakpoint at the very end. So right here, simply add this BR. So we have some space and also at the very top, let's add two of those. So BR, just like that. And then another one, just like that. So basically we will have the profile image right here. So uh, to do and then profile and then image. So let me simply save this and then go back to Chrome. And you can see that this is looking much better. Also, let me go ahead and add some CSS styling. So right here, open up the index.scss and then for the background. So go ahead and say back and then ground. So oh, actually background and then dash color. So let's pick a color. So in fact, let me use uh, this color picker right here. Save this. Now, if I open up my front end and you can see that it's looking much nicer and also you can see that we have drag and drop some files here. Let's change that text as well. So this will be drag, drag and drop. Um, so right here, a profile and then image or click to select profile and then image just like that. And then right here, so drop the image and then here, just like that, save, go back and you can see drop the image here. So obviously this is not an image, but next let's go ahead and download some images that we can use. All right, so navigate to pexels.com and right here you can download free images. So let me go ahead and search for a boy. So right here. And let's get this guy right here. So I kind of like this picture, so I'm going to download it. So free download into my desktop. So let me simply say uh, this will be uh, what was the name? So this was so if I cancel this so this was Antonio Jr. So let me grab that and uh, where did the image go? So if I download again, so that will be Antonio Jr. So if I now save this, there we go. And then we have Janet Jones. So let's actually search for a girl. So let me simply say girl. 
And then let's actually say that this is Janet Jones. So free download and then paste that in and then save. There we go. And we have two images. So if I pretty much now close this and I'm going to leave a link to pixels so you can follow along as well. So now, so you can see that we have two images right here and I can take this. So let me actually open the console and expand that like that console and right here. So if I take Antonio Jr and then drop it, you can see right here, I can drop it. Oops, that didn't work. So if I take it again, drop it there, you can see that now we have the file. So right here, you can see that the name is Antonio Jr JPEG, the size, the type image JPEG. And basically now we are ready to take the file and send it to our server. The same with Janet Jones. So if I take this file, put it here, drop it, you can see that we have Janet Jones information. Or actually the file, or actually the image for Janet Jones. So right here you can see all the information. And also you can click here and pretty much just grab the file. So I'm just showing drag and drop because it's cool, but you have both options. So next, let's go ahead and implement the functionality that will take these files and then upload them to our server. All right, so let's take these images and implement the functionality to upload them to our server, which then, so if I open up the diagram again, so right here, so we will upload the images and then it will land on our API service or actually layer. And then it will pass through the service and then the service will store them in the S3 bucket as well as the database. So we will update the actual uh, profile image link inside of our database. So remember, so before we did have this API right here. So this method, right here called upload user profile image. And uh, just to uh, mention that I had a, um, so this shouldn't be download, she should be upload. And I've mentioned that previously. So this should be up and then load because we are uploading images, but we also will have the download uh, method. So right here, you can see that we have to pass the user profile ID and then forward slash image and then upload right here, and then the actual file, right? So we have everything that we need to pass it to our server. So let's go ahead and open up VS Code and right here. So what we're gonna do is, so you see that we have the actual file, right? So what I'm gonna do here is simply create a form data. So this is what we need to send the actual file as a multi, um, so right here as a multi part file. So right here, I'm going to say const and then form and then data equals to and then new and then form data. So now let me add parentheses and then end that. Now, what I'm going to do is simply say form data and then dot append. And then right here, I'm going to append the actual file and then pass the file. So right here, so this name file has to be the same as this one. So this will be available to us through request param. So this is very important. Now let me go back. And now that we have the file appended to this form data, let's go ahead and use ACOs. So let me actually add some spaces so you can see exactly what's happening. So let me use ACOs. So I'm going to say ACOs and then dot and then post. And then guess what? So remember, so that will be um, local host and then the actual API v1 user profile and then profile ID, image, and then upload. So let's actually uh, grab the URL from here. So this will be the same thing. And then go here. And then 
let me actually uh, append here and what we need now is to pass the actual profile ID so let me use uh, uh, back ticks here and right here I'm gonna say forward slash and then I'm gonna use dollar sign and I'm gonna pass the uh, profile or actually user pro file and then ID and we're going to define this in a second forward slash and then image forward slash uh, oops <laughs> I almost made made the same mistake so upload and not download upload there we go so right here so image upload is this one right here right and you can see that we will pass the user profile in a second so now how do we get the user profile ID so this is very simple so we will get it from props so right here I'm going to say user profile ID and then when we define this component we can simply pass the user profile ID so what I'm gonna do here is simply destructure everything so I'm gonna pass everything because I know there is a a field called user profile ID so I'm gonna say right here so dot 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 and then user and then profile so this is the same as if I was to do this so let me actually say uh, user profile ID equals to and then user or actually user profile dot user profile ID right so this is too much I'm just gonna do that and now we have access to the user profile ID now let's actually finish up this uh, post method so inside of ACOs what we need to do now is actually pass D so comma and then form and then data and we also have to pass some headers so this will be in the form of an object and then inside have headers and then we will have the following so I'm gonna have the content and then dash and then type and remember what does the server accepts so remember so the server accepts a multi-part um, data value so let's actually go ahead and simply say multi and then part forward slash and then form dash and then data and there we go this should be everything that we need to send files to our server now obviously we can pass the dot and then then right so dot then and for now let's simply say console dot log and then let's simply say file uploaded successfully and then let's have the catch and then error so that's the error and for now let's simply console.log the actual error so dot log and then error oops just like that and then end that with semicolon and I think we are done so next let's go ahead and test this entire logic and see if it works Alright, let's go ahead and test things out. So first, let's make sure that the front end is up and running with no errors. So if I inspect, you can see that there is no errors. This is just a warning. And if I close this, so let's go ahead and open up the back end and go ahead and stop the back end. So I'm going to stop it. And what I'm going to do is put a breakpoint right here so put a breakpoint right here and then debug so let's debug this so basically when the client hits this endpoint right here so this endpoint the actual call will stop here and then we can inspect the values so now let me go back to the web app and let me go ahead and simply drop a file so what i'm going to do is simply grab antonio jr profile picture and then simply drop it right here and then this should work and oops we have an error so always expected right so it never works first time so let me go to console and you can see that we have a 500 so we actually try to upload the file 
but the server responded with 500. So let's actually inspect the server. And right here, you can see that we have a bunch of errors. And let me actually show you what the error is. So right here, you can see that the field file exceeds its maximal, its maximum permitted size. So basically, it means that the file is too big. So what we're going to do is actually override the defaults. So open up the project tab and inside of resources folder application.properties, let's go ahead and simply say spring dot servlet dot multi part dash and then dot and then max dash uh, file dash size equals to and then let's actually be generous so 50 mb now let me actually go ahead and uh, debug again so there we go let's actually try the exact same thing so let's actually uh, close this and then if I try and upload the file again you can see that this time it works so the file was accepted by our server and you can see that it hit the actual breakpoint so if I put this full screen you can see that we've hit the breakpoint so right here we have this inspect tool so right here we can inspect the contents of um, you know, all the fields, all the objects, so on and so forth. So you can see that we have the profile uh, ID, user profile ID. It's this one right here. But we also have the actual file. So if I open up the file, you can see that we have the file name. So Antonio Jr. And then we have the actual part. So this is some information about the file. And you can see right here the field name, the content type is form field, the size, um, you know, headers, so on and so forth, which means that the actual upload from client to server is working, which is amazing. So now let me actually collapse this and then navigate inside of this service. And right here, remember that we have to implement all of this logic. So now that we have the actual file in our server, we can implement it. So next, let's go ahead and implement this method right here. All right, so before I actually uh, implement this, I thought that it would be a really great idea if you try and implement all of these steps by yourself. So spend about 10 to 20 minutes and implement all of these steps right here. So you have everything that you need in order to save the actual file coming from the web app. So right here, so if I actually go back, I still have the breakpoint. So you can see right here, we have this file right here, right? So we have the file in our backend coming from the front end, so right here. And what we want to do is actually store it inside of the S3 bucket name called Amigos Code Image Upload 123. Obviously, the bucket name will be different for you, but try and implement all of this logic right here. So give it a go. And what I'm going to do actually is pretty much just uh, remove this uh, breakpoint and open up debug and then continue and there we go so give it a go implement all of these steps and i'm going to implement these steps with you next all right let's go ahead and implement all of these steps together now if you had a go i'm going to guarantee you that my implementation will be different than yours because you know we have different ways of implementing things and different ways of thinking. So if you achieved the same solution, but in a different way, that is absolutely fine. So the first one, so to check whether the image is empty, I'm going to say if, and then file dot is empty. So this is very straightforward. So if the file is empty, I'm going to throw new 
a legal state exception. So right here, you could actually have your custom exceptions, but I want to keep it that simple and throw illegal state exceptions. Also, if you want to learn more about exceptions, check out my video on exceptions, which I'm going to leave a link down in the description of this video. So right here, I'm going to say cannot and then upload empty and then file. And then I'm, I'm going to actually add the actual size. So right here, uh, plus and then file dot. And then we should have the actual size. So right here and then plus and then end that. There we go. So this is the first implementation. Now to check whether the actual file is an image, I'm going to say if and then arrays dot and then as list. And then I'm going to pass a few things. So let me simply say contains. And then right here, I'm going to say file dot and then get and then content type. So right here. So what I'm going to do is actually inverse this. So I'm going to say if it doesn't contain, I think there is a content and then type. So that would be, I think, from Apache dot and then yes, exactly. So image dot JPEG right here. And also um, I can say content type, oops, dot and then PNG content type dot and then um, GIF. There we go. So let me actually um, just add a static import for all of those. There we go. And this looks much better. So now if it doesn't include any of those, I'm going to throw an illegal state exception. So again, as I said, you could have your own custom exception, but for now, this will be an illegal state exception. But for now, let me simply go ahead and delete all of this and simply say, uh, file must be an image. And there we go. So next, let's go ahead and implement whether the user exists in our database. Because we're not using a real database, so IE, so if I show you the actual uh, database that we have, so data store, fake user profile data store. So this is a in memory database inside of a list. So because we're not using a real database, we can't issue commands such as, you know, select from, you know, table where the ID equals blah, right? So let's actually go ahead and use some Java streams to filter a particular user based on this ID. So let's go ahead and right here. So at the very top, you see that we have the user profile data access service. So what I'm going to do here is simply say user profile data access service. And let me put this full screen dot. And then I'm going to say get user profiles and then dot and then stream right here. So right here, I'm entering the abstraction phase. So if you want to learn more about streams, check out my website where I've got a full course on streams. It's very powerful and you should be using it in your code base. So right here, let me simply add a new line, the same here. And what I'm going to do is simply say dot and then filter. So I'm going to use the filter function right here. We simply have the user profile. And then I'm going to say user profile dot and then get and then profile ID equals and then the actual user profile. So basically I'm saying uh, I'm going to go through this list right here and then I'm going to filter a user profile which the ID is equal to the one coming from the client. So this one right here. And then I'm going to say dot and then find and then first. And then if we don't find anything, I'm going to say dot and then or else I'm going to throw a new exception. So throw, uh, let's actually throw this exception. So this will be the exception. So I'm going to say new illegal state exception 
and then right here so user uh, in fact let me use a format so string dot format and then equals and then right here I'm going to say uh, user profile and then percent s not found and then pass the actual user profile ID there we go so you can see that this looks really clean and you know streams is really powerful so now what I'm gonna do is actually extract everything into a variable and right here we have the actual profile so I'm gonna say user so right here so this is the actual user containing all the information that we need. So if I open up the user profile, you can see that it has the actual ID, a username, as well as the actual link. So there we go. So now we've implemented this third step. Now let's actually grab some metadata from the file, if any. So right here, what I'm gonna do is simply say map, and this will be a string and then a string, and then I'm gonna say meta, and then data equals to new, and then hash map, there we go. And now I'm gonna say file dot, and then get content type. So right here, so you can see that we always get the content type. So I'm going to say, uh, actually, uh, let me actually cut that. So I'm gonna cut this and then say metadata dot and then put and then I'm going to say content and then dash and then type and then paste that and the same with so dot and then put and then content dash and then length so we know that if we get to this uh, part right here we will have a file right because we are checking whether it's empty or not up above now i'm going to say file dot get and then size right here and obviously this should be a string so i'm going to say string dot value of and then the actual size and there you go so now we have the actual metadata that we can pass to our method and finally let's go ahead and pretty much insert the actual file to our s3 bucket so right here so remember that so if i expand this we implemented this file store and the file store has the actual save uh, method so right here let me go back and let's actually inject the private final file and then store and make sure that you implement the one from your package because there are quite a few so import the very first one there we go add to constructor and if i put this on a new line you can see everything properly let me go down and now right here i'm going to say file store dot well, actually not file but file store dot and then save so the save will take a couple of things it will take the actual path right so the path will be the actual bucket so what i want to do really is inside of s3 right here so you can see that we have an empty bucket but basically i want to have a folder per user right and then in each folder for a specific user you can see the list of every single uploaded file for that specific user so basically inside of a bucket you can simply have folders right so we'll have a folder for antonio and another folder for janet jones so the way that we achieve this is by simply so let me actually go ahead and simply say string and then dot format and then I'm going to say that this will take the actual bucket name and then forward slash that will be the actual folder for the actual user profile ID. So let me simply say percent and then S 
And then right here, let's go ahead and use our bucket. So I'm going to say uh, bucket and then name dot. And remember, we have profile image dot and then get bucket name. And right here, let's pass the uh, um, user dot and then get profile ID. So there we go. So this will be the actual path. So this is the path. So let me actually pass the path right here. And then for the file name, the file name will be um, the actual file name plus a random string. So again, let me simply use string dot format. And then right here, I'm going to say the file name will be the actual file name. So percent S and then dash and then a random UID. So right here, simply say file dot and then uh, get name. And then let's actually generate a random UID. So random UID and there we go. So this will be the actual file and then name. And let me actually pass inside of this save method. So file name, what do we have next? Next, we have the actual uh, metadata. So right here, we can say optional dot of and then metadata. And finally, you can see that we have to specify the actual input stream. So this is the actual file. So this will come from file dot and then get input stream. And obviously this uh, throws an exception. So let's actually go ahead and simply uh, surrounded with try catch. So we're going to um, not bring this distract trace, but we're going to throw. So I'm going to throw new illegal state exception. And then for now, let's simply say E. So I think we have an error here. So this should be percent uh, S. So just like that. And that went away. So there we go. So we've managed to implement all of these five steps. So if you have any questions on these, go ahead and drop me a message. But next, let's go ahead and see if everything works according our implementation. As I said, you might have a different implementation than what I have. But if you can achieve the exact same thing in a different way, that is absolutely fine. Next, let's go ahead and test whether we can upload files to Amazon S3. All right, so we have a bunch of logic inside of this method right here. And you can go ahead and extract this to uh, a method uh, to make it cleaner. And but basically, oh, actually, let, let's actually do it. So why not? So I'm going to extract this to a method. So is file empty. So this, I think, looks looks much better. So right here, let's go ahead and say is in an image. So right here, let's actually go ahead and simply say, so I'm going to extract all of this to a method. So extract this to a method so get and then user and then profile or and then throw and then enter there we go and then right here let's go ahead and grab everything extract to a method so um, get or actually extract uh, meta and then data there we go enter and I think this should be it. So now you can see that this looks much cleaner and you can read through easily. So now let's go ahead and pretty much just start the application. And what we're going to do is let's go to our front end. And let's try and add this image right here. So actually, let me uh, change the order right here so it's not confusing. So let's actually try and upload an image for Janet Jones. So I'm going to grab the image and then I'm going to drop right here. And let's inspect the actual console. And it's a bit confusing right here. So we have a file uploaded successfully, 
but we also have a 500. So let's actually see what is happening. So if I go to the server, so right here, a uh, file must be an image. Okay, so let's see exactly what went wrong. So um, obviously I should have actually printed the actual uh, content type. So is image. So let's go ahead and um, print the actual uh, image content or actually uh, content type. So file dot and then get content type. And if I restart the server and then go back. So let's actually upload again. And it's a 500. Let me go back and I can see that it's image and then JPEG. So I think what is happening is that we have a bug. So let me actually collapse this and this should be dot and then get and then mime type. So I think this is what gives us the actual mime type, right? So that's the actual string. So let's add the dot and then get mime type again here dot get mime type. So obviously you should have tests around this and I, you know, uh, always add tests if I'm adding uh, stuff like this because it's really important that you test whether your services do work. So I never um, you know, push stuff to master or to a branch without having tests. So if you want to learn about testing, go ahead and drop me a message and I'll show you how to test all of this. So now let's go ahead and refactor or actually restart, not refactor. And let's uh, clear the console right here. Now let's go ahead and try and upload. So I'm going to grab the image and then upload. And this time you can see that no errors and there we go. Well done. So it means that the file was successfully uploaded to S3. So again, let me also upload the Antonio Jr. So I'm going to grab the file, put it here and just give it a second. There we go. File uploaded successfully. And now let's actually check the S3 bucket. So if I go to S3 management console and then refresh and there you go. So you can see that we have two folders for each specific user, right? So this right here, uh, 8D, so 8D was uh, Antonio Jr. And then we also have the 38, which is Janet Jones. Now, if I open up now, if I dig into each folder, you can see that we have a file right here. And in fact, the actual file name is incorrect. So let me actually go back and check the other one. And also it simply says file and then the random UID. But in fact, this is an image. So if I click on this image and then you can see that we have the metadata and right here, you can see that this was the metadata that we've added. And there we go. You successfully managed to upload a file to a bucket inside of Amazon AWS. So let's actually go ahead and fix a few things here. So what I want to fix right here. So basically what I want to do is actually go back to the uh, user profile service. And I think right here, so where we generate the actual uh, file name. So this, uh, I think right here, so get name. I think this should be get and then original file name. So that will give us that. So in fact, let's go ahead and restart the server. And let me open up the debug mode. Let me cancel out of this. And let me simply collapse this. Let me start the server. Let me go back and let me delete these two folders inside of our bucket. So delete. There we go. And now if I go back to my front end, 
refresh and then let me actually upload a file from for Janet Joan there we go and the same for Antonio Jr there we go so both successfully if I go to the console refresh you can see that we have the UIDs if I click on it and there we go so this makes more sense now you can see the file name is Janet Jones JPEG and then the random string the same for Antonio Jr. right here and basically if I upload so let me go back to the app so if I upload the file again that should work and if I upload it again that should work and if I go back to the console and then open up the folder refresh you can see that we have two files and the reason why I'm doing this is so that you can keep a history for all the profile pictures uploaded for each user so you can see Janet Jones two files and the same with Antonio Jr. so there we go you've managed to successfully upload images from your web app to the Amazon AWS S3 bucket and this is really really great so now you can take all of this and pretty much just incorporate it in your apps so next let's go ahead and learn how we're going to be able to download the actual image so basically right here we want to get the image so basically we want to display the uploaded image right here so let's go ahead and do that next all right let's go ahead and learn how we're going to be able to get the image that we've stored inside of amazon aws and then retrieve it and show it right here so what i want to do first is for janet jones i'm going to grab this uid and then go back to our fake user data store and instead of generating the uid i'm going to paste that uid there right and this should be actually uid and then from string and then paste the UID because the UIDs they get generated as soon as we restart the server so let this actually be um, oops not there so let's actually um, let the UIDs be fixed so obviously if you are using a database all of this is is actually solved but we are using an in-memory database and this is what happens when you use and in memory database right so now if I um, restart the server this so now if I restart the server so let me actually restart the server and if I go back and then refresh the UIs should be the same so right here you can see that they are the same so now what we need to do is so if I open up the user profile service so right here so right here you see that we saved the actual um image which is absolutely fine but we haven't updated so right here so we haven't updated this field right here so user profile image link right so this is how we will be able to download the actual images for a specific user and basically right here this will always be the latest image that we upload for a particular user profile so if I go back and right here so remember I said and update database user profile image link with s3 image link so we already have this so this is the actual link so path plus the actual file name so this and this will give us the actual link for the image so let's go ahead and after we save the image let's go ahead and simply say user dot and then set so set user profile image link and for now let me simply add the actual file name so I'm going to construct this later when we actually um, 
download the image. So when we have the method to download the image, because I can always reconstruct this. So there we go. So now we have the file name. Now, let me also teach you something. So right here, you see that I'm using user and then dot set. So the reason why I haven't added a final, so private and then final right here, as I always do for immutability is because I'm not using a real database and I need to have the ability to set these properties. So this is something to keep in mind. And also, um, because I'm not updating the actual ID and username. So let's actually add a final here and final there. And now obviously we can't have these setters. So this is much cleaner, in fact. So there we go. So you can see now that this is much better. So let's actually restart the server because I want you to see this in action. So let's restart the server. There we go. So now if I restart, you can see that nothing has changed. But now if I upload, let's upload a third time. So let's upload this image right here. There we go. So file uploaded successfully. Now, so if I refresh this API call, remember before the user profile image link was null for Janet Jones. So now this should be set with, so right here, if I go to the console, so Janet Jones was this one. So if I refresh, so you can see the latest one is this one right here in the middle. So three ending in three C. So let me actually go back now and then refresh. And you can see that now the user profile image link has been updated, which means that I can now download this and pretty much just show it right here. And that's what we're going to do next. All right, so you can see that we have this link right here that we can simply go to our bucket and retrieve the image. So make sure not to restart the server because if you restart the server, you will lose this link right here and then you will have to upload the image again. But all of this is because I'm using an in-memory database and that's the downside of an in-memory database. So if I'm actually implementing this for real, I would use a real database. And if you want to learn how to connect to a real database with Spring Boot, go ahead and check my videos where I teach all of that. So now let's go ahead and create an endpoint that will allow us to fetch the image from Amazon S3 bucket. So let's go ahead and open up IntelliJ. And what I want you to do is open up the user profile controller. So right here, so let's go ahead and add a method. And right here, let's simply say public. And then this will return a byte array. And let's simply say download. Oh, actually, let me copy this. So let me be a bit lazy. So let me simply say down. So instead of up, and then profile image. So right here, what we need is again, the actual um, um, path variable. So let me put it there. And that's all we need. So now this will be at and then get and then mapping. So the path will almost be the same thing. So in fact, let me simply put it there. Or actually, I don't need all of that. So I think I can just get that and then put it there. And instead of upload, this will be down and then load. There we go. So let me actually expand this. So what we're going to do is simply say user and then profile service dot. And let's actually take this same name and then pass the user profile ID, right? So now let's simply go ahead and return. So we're going to return this to the client. 
Now let me actually implement this method inside of our service. And what we need to do is the following. So let's actually go ahead and say that we first need to check whether the user exists, right? So let me actually grab this method. So I like to have all the publics uh, in one section and all the private in one section. So what I'm gonna do right here is simply, uh, so before I return, I'm going to say get and then user uh, or, or else throw, so user profile ID. So right here we have the actual user, right? So this will throw and we will get the actual user. So right here. Now that we have the user, we know that we can fetch the actual uh, profile image. So remember right here where we have the actual path. So we have the path. So let's actually reconstruct the path. So right here. So we have the path, which is the bucket name plus the user dot get profile ID. And now we need the actual file name, which we have from this user. So if I click on it, you can see that we have the user profile image link. So let's go ahead and simply say file store dot and then download. So the download will simply take the full path. So the full, so the full path will be string dot and then format and then percent or actually within code. So percent and then S followed by percent and then s so right here um or in, in fact let's actually say full path here right so full path and then this will be forward slash and then percent and then s and we don't need of this one right here so let's pass full path and right here so let's actually uh, put this on a new line new line there as well and we need to pass the user dot and then get the actual link. There we go. So this is the actual full path to the image. And we can simply pass it here. And finally, let's go ahead and simply say return. So now let's go ahead and create this method inside of the uh, file store. So right here we have the full path and the way that we will download an image from uh, S3 is very simple. So let's uh, so so let's have a try block because things can go wrong. And let's also catch. So we're going to catch the Amazon uh, service exception and then simply say E and let's simply throw. So right here. So failed to download right so now what we need to do is simply say return and then s3 dot and then you can see that we have a method called get and then object so this get object takes two things takes the path and then the actual key so in fact, I think that we need to separate the actual uh, path and the key. So let me actually say path and then this will be a string key. So let's actually pass the path and the actual key. Let's go back where this is called and let's actually uh, revert this. So we wanted to have that there. Remove this one. So this is the actual um, path and then we want to have the path so this will be path and right here so we need to do uh, something so we need to say uh, user dot and then get user profile uh, image link right here so remember if this is present I'm going to say dot and then map. So I'm going to map this to a byte array. So I'm going to get the actual link. And then this will say file store dot download, passing the actual uh, path and then the link. So oh, actually, let me name this key. Uh, so this will be the actual key, right? But you get the idea. 
and then dot or and then else. So let's throw a new and then byte. And then this will be a byte of zero, right? So this looks much cleaner. And let me return this. So as I said, you can go ahead and pretty much just check my website if you want to learn more about streams. But this is how we download a file. So now inside of the download method, so actually I think that we need to, so if I remove this, so let's actually say S3 dot and then get object passing the path as well as the key. So now with this, we have the S3 object. And now from the object, I can say object dot and then get, and you can see that we have the content. So right here, so content, which is an input stream. So there we go. So now that we have the input and then stream, what we're going to do is simply say I O and then utils dot and then two byte array and then pass the input stream just like that. And basically now I can simply say return and we have to catch the I O exception right here. And there we go. So let me inline this and this should be it. So let me actually remove uh, that line. And now I think we are in a good position to test whether we can download a file. All right, so let's implement the logic in our front end to download the images from our buckets. So open up VS code and this will be very straightforward. So what we need to do is right here. So where we have the actual uh, div. So remember we had the to do. So what we're going to do is very simple. So simply add curly brackets and then say user profile and then dot user profile image ID. So if we have that, we will have an image tag. So image tag and then the SRC. So S R C will be, you should guess it. So this will be almost the same as this one right here. Oh, actually, where's the download? So right this one here. So let's grab all of this and then put it here inside. And instead of upload, this will be down and then load. And right here, we need to have uh, the else block. Let's actually have no, right? So we either have an image or we don't have an image. So if I refresh that and user profile ID is not defined. So obviously, so because we need to say user profile, so we need to grab that and then say dot user profile ID. So if I save this, and this is not going to work because it's a 404, and that's because I need to restart my server. So let me restart the server. There we go. Uh, and in fact, let me actually uh, cancel this stop and then start in debug mode. And let me put the break point um, actually. So let's actually walk this through. So where we download the image. So let's put the breakpoint right here. There we go. So now if I go ahead and upload, let's upload uh, an image again. And you can see that worked the same for Antonio Jr. There we go. Now, if I refresh this, you can see that we go straight to our back end and let's and let's walk this through. So we actually have a user and then the path. So let me show you what the path is. So the path is this. So let me put this full. Oh, actually, let me show you here. So this is the path, right? Amigos code, image upload, one, two, three, 
and then this is the actual full path so remember so this is the folder so this is the folder so 84 so right here so let me show you exactly what is that so 84 so if i go back is this folder and then inside of that folder we have the actual so if i um open up the user profile so the link so right here ends in 68 so you can see that we have 68 right here so that should download that file now if i go into this method so let me put a breakpoint there so let me continue you can see that i've hit this breakpoint now the key you can see that the key is correct right so 68 and if i step over there we go so now we've managed to download the file so you can see that this is the actual file containing a bunch of information right so you can see the metadata inside and the actual content now if i go ahead and simply continue and let's check the console so you see that no errors so if i go back to our front end and then you can see that we've actually downloaded the actual image wow so you can see that we've downloaded both images and basically they are really really big and what we need to do is to resize them so if i open up our front end and what we're going to do is inside of the app.css so right here let's go ahead and add some css so for the images that we have what i'm going to do is simply say width of 300 and then let's actually say that the height will also be 300 and it should be pixels so 200 pixels 300 pixels and let's say object and then fit and then cover and finally let's go ahead and say border dash and then radius so we'll have a border radius of 50 and then percent oops 50 percent there so now if i save this and let me actually go back and let me actually mute all breakpoints there we go and now if i refresh the application there we go so you can see that this is working nice and in fact let me actually uh, make this 200 so 200 200 save that go to index.js and then simply say margin and then top and let's add a margin top of 100 pixels so just like that and let's go back and voila so you can see that this is working beautifully now i think we are really close to the end so let me actually show you that if i go to pixels and then simply say girl So let's choose a different picture. So let's say that now, um, you know, she looks like this. So download and um, this was what, Janet. Let me simply say Janet. And then let's actually uh, do the same for a boy. There we go. So let's actually say that this is which picture so let's say that uh, this guy right here so let's say that this guy right here is Antonio so free download Antonio save and you can see that we have the new pictures right here and let me go back to the app and if I now pretty much just change the image so right here I'm going to drop it and let's do the same for Antonio so let's drop both of these images and you can see that currently we're not refreshing on success 
but that is something that you can add on your own and expand on this user interface. So now if I refresh this, you can see that the images did update. And basically this is just working. So, so as I said, you can pretty much just add a bunch of functionality to your own application, but you can take whatever you've learned in this tutorial to store and download images. So right now we are using React, but for example, if you wanted to store images from your, uh, you know, iOS app or Android app, you could definitely do it, right? Because the API is the same. So I think this is all. So right here, you can see that we've managed to implement everything that we wanted, right? So if I make this full screen, so you can see right here. So we have the client, we expose an API, and then the service does a bunch of logic, and then we store it to S3, as well as have the profile in a fake database. So obviously, you know, if I restart this, so if I restart the application, I will lose the actual images, right? Because so if I go to, so if I go to the fake user profile um, data store, so right here, you can see that this is set to null, right? But you could also, you know, grab the actual link and put it here. But, you know, if you are doing this for real, please do not use this fake user profile data store. So if you want to learn more about the penis injection, go ahead and check my website, my YouTube videos, where I cover all of that. This is all for now and let's wrap up things. All right, so thank you so much for sticking with me throughout this course. Now, as you saw, saving images, it's a really, really cool thing that you should be aware of how to do it, right? Because nowadays, we are storing lots of information about users. And to be honest, we are storing um, you know, nowadays we are storing files, uh, you are storing content, you can even store videos, right? You can store anything you want with uh, what we've built because after all, we are sending a file as an input stream and then you storing that into the S3 bucket and you can pretty much just store whatever you want. So it was a pleasure teaching you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe because it will help me to do more videos like this. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions, go ahead and message me. This is all for now, and I'll catch you on the next one.